What's up everybody? Today I have another compilation style video for you, this time from India. Truly one of the richest culinary cultures in the world. India is a vast country with a diverse culinary landscape. And in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the top 35 street foods to try on your next trip to India. We just stopped at a little stall on the side of the street because I spotted this guy making something that's called namkeen, which is sort of just like a little cracker, sort of a saltine. And the way he's making it is quite impressive. There is a huge cauldron of boiling oil and he's just using his bare hands to push the batter, which I'm guessing is probably like a chickpea batter. And he's pushing it through the this special device that's got these small holes and then frying those up. They turn into sort of like little french fries. Just ordered up some of the namkeen, which he is making behind me. Pretty simple dish. Um, usually it's eaten like as a snack or alongside some other things like curry. But uh, there are these little kind of worm shaped crispies. So let's give some of these a try here. Mm. Oh wow, they're actually quite spicy. And they're nice and crispy. It's almost like a little mini french fry with that little Indian spice touch to it. It's pretty good, nice little snack. We made it to our next place. This place is called Ashok Kulchawala. And kulcha is a very typical Punjabi dish. It's a stuffed bread that's cooked in a tandoor oven. This place is just packed out. Look at this. And they serve it with a chana, so chickpea masala. We're gonna order up. I don't even really know how to order, but we're gonna kind of fight our way in and see what we can do. <laughs> So we have our kulcha, the butter is just melting all over top of this thing. We ordered the stuff with potatoes and there's some fenugreek on top, some uh, cumin, all kinds of chili flakes and lots of different little things. And then on the side here we have our chana, the chickpeas, and then this is a chutney with looks like tons of onions, green onions, um, maybe some uh, radish in there as well. So I'm going to rip this open and it's like crispy, crispy on the outside. And I gotta make sure I get into the middle to get some of that stuffing, oh yeah. So it's a very thin stuffing, but you can see it in there. Look at that, it looks like, maybe that's pomegranate seeds? I'm not even sure, there's so many things in here. And then we're gonna go in for some of the chana. Let's try. Oh man, wow, that is full of flavor. So we just spotted this guy on the side of the road selling malayo, which is a winter only dish. It's a dish of saffron milk that is left overnight to settle. When the dew settles, it is finished and it is this big pot of yellow, milky, frothy, bubbly, delicious looking dessert. We just ordered one up, this looks so good. Check this out, this is the malayo. Look at the texture of that. I don't know if you can tell, uh, but it's got this weird kind of foam, bubbly texture, almost like micro bubbles. Um, I don't really know what to compare it to. I've never had a dish that is quite as foamy as this. And you can see it's just bright yellow with all that saffron. There's some pistachios, coconut, almonds, some spices on top there, and there's some sugar mixed in as well. Let me try it. Wow. That is awesome. The texture of that just completely disintegrates in your mouth instantly. You can't even feel it. You can definitely taste that saffron. It's got a little bit of a floral flavor and then all of that nuttiness and a little bit sweet. That takes the word airy to another level. This is like nothing. Mm. You could like inhale this stuff. So this is the guy that we were looking for. He is serving something called halwa, which is a semolina dough mixture. But this one is special because he uses jaggery, which is an unrefined sugar cane to make the halwa. Serving it right out of this little cart 
with four wheels, really cool, right on the side of the road. And this is only available in the winter time and only for about one month. So it's quite a rare street food, actually. He sprinkled some almonds. There's a lot of spices going on in there. I think there's some saffron and it smells really good. It's gonna be sweet, so let's get some. And of course, he just added about three or four cups more of ghee, that clarified butter. Wouldn't be a Punjab without the ghee. We have our halwa, you can see here. Um, it's red from all the saffron that's in, and then we've got all these little raisins on top, and the owner of the stall was just telling us that these raisins are imported from Kabul in Afghanistan. Some, looks like sliced almonds on top, and then just look at all that ghee underneath there. Jeez, I'm gonna have to hit the gym really hard when I leave India. Mm. Oh man. Jeez, I have a sweet tooth and that is perfect. Oh, it has such a unique texture. The semolina kind of turns into small little granules and then the almonds are still crisp. It's sweet, very buttery and uh, filled with ghee. But I didn't get any of those raisins, so let me try this time. Mm. Oh yeah, those have a sourness to them. This is delightful. I love this. I could eat this every day too. Oh, great day of eating so far. Oh, that is so good. We are at a kebab shop called Abdul Gyani Qureshi and they are making a ton of kebabs. There is a ton of people eating here and they are serving them up hot. I was just filming and all the charcoal that they are grilling it on is sort of blowing in my face. But that's okay, it smells incredible. We are going to try out the kebabs now. <laughs> Our kebabs have arrived. I have the chicken kind, Gorab has the mutton kind, and they are served right on the stick that they were cooking it on. And what is that? Made so it of some sort of metal. Uh, so that's a metal, that's a steel that you see, and it's uh, the kebabs are rolled over this, yeah. and it's grilled to perfection so that we can have it right off the boat. So okay. you, you see this? It's so soft that it comes, and oh, see man. how hot, how juicy they are. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try, try that. It. Yum. Oh, wow. Yummy. These oh man, it's so soft. Oh, that is minced chicken with tons of spices. Nice and spicy, but a little bit sweet too. Oh man, that is, that is phenomenal. So first off, the water is boiling with some cardamom pods. They're steaming the rice in these huge pots. And then at the same time, they're cooking down the mutton. So that's going to be the main ingredient here for the biryani rice, is that beautifully cooked mutton with all kinds of different spices in this really rich red bubbly broth. And then he just made up a new pot of the biryani. It's gonna be about 20 minutes before it's finished. So what he did was take some of that meat and some of that kind of soup from that mutton and put it in the bottom of the pot, then layer it with some rice. And then he covered that rice with a little bit of some red sauce. I just expect it's packed full of spices. And then some more rice on top. Put a cheesecloth in a cover, covered it up. It's sitting on a wood fire and it's gonna simmer away there for about 20 minutes. So it's almost time to try the famous biryani here in Lucknow. Oh, oh man, it's really subtle actually, and a little bit salty.
come to our dinner spot and I am just blown away. We came right up to have this Chungizi chicken and they are cooking the biggest pot of curry I have ever seen in my entire life. Huge flame underneath, so much curry on top and it smells incredible. So we're gonna order some of this up and try it out. So this behind me is the Tunde Kebab, Lucknow's most famous food. They are these little minced meat patties, buffalo meat, and he's cooking it on charcoal. So here it is guys, the reason we came to Lucknow, and honestly, it looks a little disappointing. It doesn't look like much. We only ordered one plate, but this is four of the Tunde Kebabs. This place has been open since 1905, making this particular dish. We've also got a roti, you definitely need to fix it up with some roti. So let me grab one of these and just watch this, okay? This is craziness. You can see that these are just so soft. There's a crispy little layer on top, but then so, so soft. That is ridiculous. Let me try this. Wow. I know I've said this countless times that you don't need teeth to eat this meat, but screw all of those other times. This is the only time I really meant it. You could drink this with a straw. It's almost the same texture as hummus. It's almost off-putting how soft it is. I really didn't expect it. I thought there'd be at least that muscular feeling of meat, but that is not the case. It is more like a paste than a meat. There is a little crispy layer on the top, but wow, ridiculous texture. I can't even wrap my head around that. That's so weird, but I do love the flavors. There's so many spices going on in there, and it's really smoky, too. So we are at our first stop today and what we have ordered is called bel puri. So basically it's just this puffed rice, a ton of like these little crispies on top, some fresh onions, fresh tomatoes, coriander, and then he tops it with a spicy chutney and tamarind sauce. And it just looks awesome and it's served in this kind of newspaper uh, roll up and with these little wooden spoons. So let's take a big bite of that. It looks like it's gonna be pretty good. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. It's actually quite spicy and tangy from that tamarind. Super crunchy, a little bit sour as well and you can definitely taste that coriander in there. Take another bite. Mm. Oh yeah. It's kind of like, just like a really refreshing little snack. So he's just making up the fresh chai or tea and using that mixture of spices, masala, and lots of milk. And one of the key uh, steps is frothing up that chai to make sure it is nice and uh, foamy on top. We're ordering up their special chai. I'm not exactly sure what to expect, but this place is super popular. They have a couple little breakfast items too, which I think we're gonna try, but just really fun to watch this guy making the fresh chai. <laughs> We've got our chai. This is the special chai, as I mentioned. So what makes this one a little bit different is he used some fresh 
melt foam to put on top of the chai. And it kind of looked like a cappuccino, to be honest. And then he mixed up uh, with a mortar and pestle some almonds, cardamom, pistachios, maybe a little bit of sugar, some other things I definitely missed. And then sprinkled those all on top, and this is the final result. It's cool how they serve it in two cups to keep it from burning your hand, but this just smells so intense sitting right outside with all the locals. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah. Oh man. I love that cardamom flavor. Super creamy. Actually, it's not as sweet as I thought. I guess he didn't put as much sugar in it as they usually do here in India. But then those little crunchy bits of pistachio and almonds, a little nutty flavor. That is awesome. Every morning starts with chai here in India. This place is intense. From inside to outside, it is just completely packed. Apparently, they serve around 700 cups of chai before 11 a.m. every day here. So we've got our puris. Here in India, you'll get all kinds of different types of bread, naan, roti, chapati, all kinds of different things, and puri is one of them. And it's kind of like this ballooned up, deep fried bread, very thin and crispy. And then this spot is serving it with chana, which is the chickpea curry here. You can see some red uh, chili like oil on top of it. And then those chickpeas, and it looks like a couple pieces of potato too. And then on the side, we've got some pickles, some pickled carrots, and then two types of radish. Standing room only, of course, here. So let's dig in. Okay, so I'm gonna rip some of this puri. You can see just how thin this is. It is like paper, paper thin. And then grab a little bit of those chickpeas, kind of stuff them inside here. Let's try that. Mm. Yum, oh man. That was spicy for breakfast. Chickpeas and the potatoes are the exact same texture. Completely disintegrate in your mouth. That puri is kind of crispy, but because it's so thin, it's not really like a chip yet. It's still got a little bit of an elasticity to it. And then, yeah, a lot of spice is going on in there and a lot of heat too. That's just a simple, plain breakfast. The puri is a little bit oily, but it goes nicely with all of that chana. Mm. These guys are just working away like crazy. We are at our next spot and this place is serving something very unique. It's called bati. It's wheat flour and it's formed into a ball. But what the interesting thing is is how they are preparing it. So they're using cow dung as a substitute for charcoal and they're putting the wheat flour balls, the bati, directly in the charcoal. You can see right here behind me, he's just picking them out now. So nothing to keep it off of the cow dung. It's just literally completely covered in it. Of course that cow dung is dried out and very, very hot right now. Uh, they also have a huge uh, mountain of the cow dung and it's just simmering away, getting all heated up before they'll put the bati in with it. They're cooking a couple other things too. This place is really cool. It's a really traditional setting. We're gonna go inside and order up a tali with a couple different things and a bati for sure. The way that they clean the ashes of that cow dung off the bati isn't particularly thorough. Uh, he just slaps it with a burlap sack to get some of the ashes off, and then he puts it inside that burlap sack and kind of uh, moves it around, shakes it around, gets all the rest of the ashes off. Well, probably not all of them, but supposedly the cow dung is what really gives this dish its flavor. Okay, I'm gonna grab a piece of the bati first, of course, and you can see the outside is scorched from that dung. Get some of that lentil mixture on the inside, and I'll put this over here and grab a little bit of the choka, that eggplant. Kind of mix that in with the bati, and let's try that. Mmm. 
Yum. There is a tiny little stall on the corner of a hidden alley here in Jaipur that is selling a delicacy of Gujarat province called Kamandokla. So we just ordered some up. I'm really excited to try this. It's something that's very interesting. It is this chickpea batter, which is mixed with sugar and lime juice. And then it is topped with tons of poppy seeds. You can see, looks like some green chilies and also some cilantro and then a green chutney as well. So let me just grab a piece here. Let's try this there. Mmm. Mmm. It's actually quite sour from that lemon juice. That has a unique flavor. The texture is similar to like pound cake, but then there's little pieces of poppy seeds, so it kind of gives it a crunch. The flavor is hard to describe. It's sort of sour, but also kind of tart, and it's really soaked up all the chutney that he put on top, that green chutney, which I think is mostly lime juice. It's pretty good. There's some cilantro on there too, so it gives it a fresh kick but it's very interesting. I've never tasted anything quite like it. Very moist. ordered up our jalebi they are making these fresh and Gaurav was telling me that this guy when he first came to start the shop in 1882 had only two rupees in his pocket and I'm sure he's making lots of money now because they are selling tons of these jalebis they look awesome so we watched them cook this up fresh you can see my jalebi here this is quite a large one this is orange and not like the one we had yesterday which was black and they are soaked in sugar uh, like a sugar syrup so let me break a piece off and try this Oh man, that feels nice and uh, sugary. Let's try that. Mm. Oh man, really crispy and really juicy. It is so sweet. And it's almost like a sponge cake on the inside, how much liquid it's retaining. And they are again frying these in desi ghee, that clarified butter. Okay, Japanese. Yeah. Onion. Okay. We just popped down a little alley that is full of tons of shops selling different types of chat. So I spotted a guy that's selling some fresh looking samosas. So we ordered up a samosa. Samosa is something that uh, most people in the Western world will know about from India. It's definitely one of my favorite Indian foods and they serve it a little bit differently than we would back home. And that is uh, kind of crushed up, you can see here, and then topped with a chutney and also topped with some onions here. And you can see this one is stuffed with potatoes. Mm. The chutney on top of that brings out all the flavors. It's a sweet, spicy chutney, and then the outer shell of the samosa is nice and crispy and a little bit flaky too. And then the inside there is just packed with spice. Everything you eat here is just so flavorful. It just completely coats your mouth in those Indian spices, and this uh, samosa is no exception. Mm. This is exactly what I think of when I think of Indian flavors. A little bit sweet, full of flavor, and quite spicy. And although it doesn't look like much, this thing packs a punch. It is delicious. We have come to have dinner tonight at the Talk of the Town. Literally and figuratively, this restaurant is called the Talk of the Town and they specialize in serving kebabs and tikka. So we just ordered up some chicken tikka and we're gonna have a little feast tonight. Our food has arrived, it looks absolutely incredible. We are right on the side of the busy road and just check this out here. We have a couple different things. This is the chicken tikka, which you can see is just red hot looking and this was skewered and cooked right on the charcoal. 
uh, a sauce on the side, some sort of a chutney. Grab a piece of chicken tikka and dip it in my sauce here. I'll find out what the sauce is. Let's give that a try. Mmm. <laughs> oh man, that's phenomenal. Okay, that's a 10 out of 10 on the spicy Richter scale. But that sauce is awesome. It is kind of like sour. There's definitely curd in there. And then that chicken is so ridiculously juicy and smoky too. Let's go in for one more dip of that sauce. Oh man, my mouth is on fire. That is some spicy sauce, but delicious. Mmm. What is it on? <laughs> All right, let me rip off some of this paratha, just covering my hands in, in that ghee, and then I'm just gonna go in for a dip of this, the dal makhani, their, their most popular, famous dish, Punjabi specialty. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. That has such a rich, deep flavor. Those lentils are ridiculously soft, and then that bread, nice and crunchy. Those, that paratha is so oily with that ghee. It's not necessarily really bad for you because it's clarified butter. It actually tastes amazing. It's got all that red oil on top, a little bit of spice going on there, but it's not overly spicy. Oh, that is so good. So we just ordered a lassi, but we didn't order a typical lassi. We ordered a special lassi, which comes with something called pela, which is gram flour sugar. It's kind of almost like a little sweet that he's broken up into the lassi itself. And then also we have malai, which is the clotted cream, that top cream that he's scooping off fresh, laying it on ice to cool it. And I think the lassi is just about finished. We are literally right on the side of the road. Cool little shop. We have our lassi. That was quite the preparation. This is no regular lassi. You can see the malai, that um, clotted cream on top. And this is kind of what was left over after he mixed in that sweet, that gram flour sweet. And then underneath this is just the regular lassi curd with quite a bit of sugar. So let me pull away this first and just try it as is. Wow. That is rich and thick, holy. That is packed full of butter and cream. There's just a lot of fattiness going on in there. It's not as sour as some of them that I've had. Now I gotta try a little bit of this stuff on top. There's just all kinds of different dairy products and a little bit foamy, a little bit chunky. Let's try. Wow. That stuff is so rich. Oh man, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to finish this off. That is so heavy. So they're toasting all of the bread on charcoal. I think that's how it should be done every time by hand on charcoal. I know it's gonna make it taste even better. And one cool thing about this place is they have their own little temple here. It's like a temple of chai. It's down this really quiet alleyway. It's kind of hidden away. I really like this spot so far. So we've got three different types of toast that they serve here. They're actually using bread that is quite cheap, like white processed bread, but the ingredients that they're topping them with are all homemade. So the first one, this one here, it just looks plain, but actually it's been cut open and, and stuffed full of white butter, homemade white butter, and then toasted a second 
second time. So it's double toasted. Back here, this is just the white butter, regular white butter. It's served with a masala on the side with some salt. And then this one just looks insane. This is a mountain of malai or a cream, clotted cream on top with tons of sugar. You can see all that sugar. And I gotta start with this one. This just looks so good. My mouth is watering. This looks incredible. Oh man. That is so good. Even though this is a cheap bread, it tastes really good because of the smokiness from the charcoal. And then that sweet sugar on top of the creamy malai that goes so, so well with the crispy bread. Man, that is so good. Gorob was telling me that this is what a lot of Indians will eat when they're kids, uh, just at home. Mom will make this as a quick before bed snack. And this is my style, this is so good. Let's try the stuffed one next. Wow. He must have put a lot of butter in there. Oh my God. That is like wet on the inside, crispy on the outside, but super salty from all that butter that was put inside. Mm. Really crispy. This is the topped with white butter kind, served with the salt masala. It was already a little bit on, but I'll put a little bit extra. Let's try. Mm. Wow. It doesn't look like much, but that mixture of spices with the salt is really strong, actually. There's definitely some cumin in there. This is like the perfect way to start the day. Actually, I could sit here all day and keep eating these toasts. They're really good. Just squeeze some lemon on squeeze top. Squeeze some lemon, okay. And yeah. then there's some onions as well on the side here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's gonna make it good. Yes. And let's grab Can a piece. Can we pick one piece each? Yep. And let's go it's for a dip. Huh? Yeah, it's quite hot. Dip it in the sauce and that. Yeah. And let's try that. Let's try that and try. Oh, wow. Yummy. Nice. That is juicy chicken on the inside. The aloo tiki is a boiled potato masala mixture that is fried on the skillet. It's then topped with mutter, which is peas, and then curd, a little bit of cumin, red chutney, green chutney, and then a little salad of radish and some fresh coriander. And here we have it served in the leaf bowl once again. And you can see that potato underneath here and all of those beautiful chutneys and some of those peas. Let's get a big, bite for my first try. My favorite part is the red chutney. It's a tamarind based chutney, so it's got a sourness. The curd is sweet. They've definitely added sugar to it. Not my favorite, to be honest, but not bad. We have ordered a Kolkata famous dish. This is the kati roll. And it is basically a parata bread 
stuffed with, we ordered chicken and tons of onions, lots of spices and some spicy sauce and mustard sauce as well. And we are at a very famous place to get the kati roll. It's called Kusum Rolls. And I, I'm ready to try this. It looked really good. Oh yeah. Mm. The bread, the paratha is amazing. It's kind of like still gooey, but at the same time, it's got a crisp exterior. It's sort of like flaky, and there's tons of onions in there. Big chunks of chicken, a little bit spicy, and then that mustard sauce makes it nice and like tangy. So we've come just inside the shop and this guy's got a couple of different things. So this one's mango, right? Or yes. they're both mango, right? Both, they're both mango. This one is sweet. This one's this sweet. This one is sour. Yeah. And then they put some masala on top yeah, with some lemon. Some chili flakes some too. Chili flakes, yeah. yes, yes. So this is sort of like a, almost like a breath freshener or something yeah, you can so, have uh, after so a meal. This is, uh, this, is, this is what you have after the meal here. Right. And uh, it, it acts like a digestive. Okay, let's try. Oh yeah. Wow, packed with flavor. He put a lot of lemon on top of there. Um, it's got this kind of interesting dried fruit texture. Yeah. A little bit spicy from that chili. You have to try the sweet one. Also. Okay, yeah. Look at these. It's almost like almost like jelly. You break a little piece off. Let's try that one. Oh yeah, a little bit of salt on top, yeah. but that one's a lot sweeter. Yeah, but nice I'm sure fruity. you like this one. I do like this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. A lot of mango flavor packed into there. So this is uh, another one of the digestives that he's given me to try. So this is made of tamarind. It has some uh, mint also in it. Okay. And of course the masalas that he's added. Right. You want to try this? Yeah, let's try this. Well, tamarind is one of my favorite things yeah. in the entire world. Oh yeah. Sour. Super sour. You can even feel the spice in there. Yeah. Like granules of spice. Oh, I think I like that yeah, actually. I like that really. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> So we are at our next spot and they're preparing something called paneer burji and here in Punjab they definitely don't skimp on the butter and by not skimping I mean they go over the top. There's so much butter in all of the dishes and ghee but uh, that's really what brings out all the flavors and what makes it taste so good. So this is definitely not a simple dish. There's a lot of ingredients. I saw him start with a huge chunk of butter, a little bit of salt, some chilies, green chilies, some onions, some tomatoes. Then he took some gram flour that's mixed with water, turmeric, lots of spices. And then the main ingredient here is going to be the paneer, which is sort of like Indian cottage cheese. Thank you. We have our paneer burji. This is the breakfast of champions. Check this out. This is a thing of beauty. So this is the paneer burji. All of those ingredients and tons of butter. He put an extra slab of butter on top, some fresh coriander. And you can see all that paneer, that Indian cottage cheese on the side. We've got some onions, some radish, some mint chutney, tamarind chutney, and then he also fried up a couple pieces of bread because you can't eat anything here in India without bread. So let me go in and take a little piece of bread and some of this paneer burji. I am not exactly sure what to expect this to taste like, but it looks incredible. Mm. Oh. You can definitely taste that paneer. It's not a strong cheese. It's very, very light. And also I can taste a lot of ginger in there. Of course, butter, it's so buttery. And then that bread soaks it up very nicely. It's not spicy like the puri and chana that we just had. It's actually very mild. Just one. So we were just walking down the street and we spotted somebody making, uh, it looked like a little cookie. What is it called? It's called chikki. Chikki? Yeah. All right. So uh, this is how it looks. It's made with jaggery and peanuts. Peanuts, okay. Mm. Oh wow! <laughs> that is really crispy. Nice. Lots of peanuts so, too. Uh, it's a mm. little hot. Once it cools down, it will be more crunchier. Mm. I think there's almonds and peanuts in yes, there. Yes. Really chewy actually. That's yeah. delicious. We have come to have a little bit of a sweet for breakfast today. So this is called rabri, which is a saffron milk. There's all kinds of different spices in there, cardamom, some pistachios. So let's give this a try. 
Oh, wow. It is quite sweet. There's a lot of sugar in there for sure. You can taste that saffron. It almost has like a floral flavor to it. Extremely creamy. Nice and cool too. And I love how he's serving it out of this huge pot. Oh man, that is surprisingly delicious. Silky smooth. We just ordered up our first snack today. It is another one of those famous Indian chats. And this has to be one of the most wild concoctions I've ever seen. So the guy started out by cutting up some different fruits and then topping it with all kinds of different spices. I think I saw some masala, some uh, sugar, and then he squeezed a lime in that, kind of mixed it up, and then topped it with some chickpeas and pomegranates. It is absolutely ridiculous looking, so let's try it. I'm gonna go in for the, the orange. Uh, let me go in for the pineapple. Let's pineapple. Share okay, yeah, cheers. Let's try this here. And one bite. One bite? One okay. bite. That is like a bomb. It exploded in my mouth. Full of flavor. Yes. The flavors are so strong. It's quite spicy. Yeah. You can definitely taste quite a bit of salt in there yeah. too. And I love the pomegranates. They kind of pop in your mouth. We made it to our next spot for lunch. This place is called Moo Beans, and this is a Mughalai cuisine restaurant. Their main thing is the Nihari, which is the mutton, or actually, one thing you'll notice about this restaurant is that they actually have buffalo on the menu, because this is a Muslim Mughal restaurant. We're gonna order up the mutton Nihari, which is the bone marrow with mutton in this beautiful stew, and they are also making tons of fresh bread here. We ordered the rumali roti, Let's go sit down and have lunch. We have our mutton nihari. You can see this beautiful, beautiful gravy with a lot of that ghee on top of it, some fresh coriander, and then these chunks of mutton, bits of tendon, and lots of bone marrow. And you can see, yeah, that's right on the bone there. Look at that, all that bone marrow has just been stewing away, coming out of that uh, Nihari, or into that Nihari, I should say. Then over here we have the Rumali roti, which is this paper, paper thin roti, which works perfectly for soaking up all that gravy. So let me grab a little piece of meat. Oh wow, that completely fell off. And definitely some of that gravy. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. That is great. That piece of tendon that I just had felt like fat. It just completely disintegrated in my mouth. We are now at the most famous dessert shop here in Lucknow. It's called Prakash and they are serving kulfi, which is kind of like a Indian ice cream. The way that he's got it stored is really cool. He's got this big, huge metal pot, and then it's all wrapped up with burlap sack. And then inside, he's got these metal cylinders, kind of like tin cans that the kulfi is inside of, and it's frozen completely on the outside. He soaks it in some water and then kind of works the kulfi out of there. And then they're going to top it with faluda, which is kind of like a little noodle. It's gonna be very sweet with some pistachios. We're gonna order one up. Let's try it out. We are sitting down now. This place is packed out, but it's kind of hidden back here. We have our kulfi faluda, and I will admit that Indian sweets are a little bit hit and miss with me. Sometimes I really love them, and sometimes I don't like them at all. I haven't had kulfi yet on this trip, so we've got two types of faluda. One is sweetened with some saffron, that's the yellow one, and then white is just regular. Underneath, we've got the kulfi, and it's got some nuts inside, probably some dried fruits, and also he topped it with rose water. So all these very interesting ingredients, perfect way to end the day, but let's give it a try. Oh yeah. That was very Indian-esque, you could say. You can taste that rose water, it's very floral. Some saffron in there. It's very fresh and actually, it's not as sweet as I thought. That faluda on top reminds me of chendol. The little pandan green noodles that we get in Indonesia and Malaysia. 
in Singapore, but this is quite different in flavor than chendol. Really interesting. That kulfi is super thick. The texture is crazy. And there's some crunchy nuts in there too. So I was definitely not expecting that. This restaurant is very modern looking and clean on the outside, but we just went back into their kitchen. Also very clean, but very traditional. They've got tons of tandoors and just cooking like crazy, even though it's late at night. And there's tons of people here. So I'm sitting down with Gorob now. We've got ourselves some paratha, and mine is gobi, which is stuffed with cauliflower, and yours is aloo, yes. right? Which is stuffed with potatoes, and you can see they have put a ton of white butter all on top of this, like so much, so much butter. And then they put an extra huge clump of it on top too. So this just looks super good. Yes. Are we just gonna eat it plain? Yes, so uh, usually we do eat it with achar and uh, with some tea. Pickles and tea, yeah. yeah pickles and tea. Yeah. And uh, let me just try with some pickle. You wanna try some pick with pickle? Carrots in there and do have some mango in there. Mango, oh, Yeah, wow. that's a mango. Okay, yeah, yeah. throw it down there. So I've ripped off a piece here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this mango. They have some chilies as well, so. Oh yeah. All right, let's try that. Mm. One sip of this is right. Okay. Yum, yum. That pickled mango, super strong, super sour, very salty as well. And that paratha is just so buttery and crisp on the outside. <laughs> we just ordered up our fresh kachori and what kachori is is a staple of this area here in India, Rajasthan. So it's a deep fried kind of crispy fritter that's filled with dal and spices. This place, uh, we just saw how they were making it back and it looked like there was all kinds of different things in there, chili, tons of different spices. I'll have to bite in to try it, but I was just speaking to the owner, a really friendly guy, and he said that his grandfather started this restaurant in 1963 and this place is called Paranji Kachori. Voila. And we just got our kachori here. I ordered up the kachori hing, which is with curd. So we've got this beautiful looking kachori, which I'm just gonna break open here. And you can see that uh, doll inside that fried lentils. And then let me get some, some curd here and try this out. Mm. Oh man, yum. Oh, that's awesome. That is just a flavor bomb. It doesn't look like much from the outside appearance wise, but once you break into that, that is so ridiculously flavorful. There's so many different spices going on there. It's got a little bit of heat from some chili. It's nice and creamy on the inside, but also I can really taste like a little bit of a licorice flavor. I think it's coming from fennel. Let me take one more bite here and make sure I get a lot of this curd. That curd goes so nicely with it. Let's try that. Oh man. It's so sour, that curd. And it really cools kind of the heat from the chili. And that kachori is nice and crispy and kind of flaky on the outside. That's such a, an incredible pairing. So we're at the famous Blue Lassie shop, one of the most popular shops here in Varanasi with foreign tours especially. It's been recommended by Lonely Planet all kinds of different places and he's got an extensive menu of Lassies which is the curd, yogurt, sweet uh, Indian drink. So we ordered up a couple different kinds, we're gonna all try one and see how they taste. So I have my pomegranate banana lassi. This place is really popular, mostly with just foreigners though, to be honest. You can see he's sprinkled lots of pistachios on top, some pomegranates, and then little slices of banana. And he actually mixed the pomegranate into the lassi itself. So let me get some of these toppings, some of the lassi, and try it all together. Oh man, look at that. It's pretty good. I love the crunchy pomegranate. Tastes nice with the banana too. It's almost like strawberry banana, but pomegranate banana. And then crunchy pistachios. The lassi is really sweet though. 
I gotta say, I'm super thankful to have Gorov SWAT official here with us. Check out his YouTube channel down below because otherwise without him, I don't know how I would get to the front to order there. But we've got our tomato chat. This is what this chat bandar is famous for. You can see there's so many things in here. He loaded it full of different ingredients. There's a tomato puree, there's all kinds of desi ghee, there's some peas, there's some crunchy bits, fresh coriander, I think there's onions in there, and there's definitely some lentils as well. So I'm just gonna go in for a huge bite here, served in the clay pot with a little um, wooden spoon. Mm. Wow, that is crazy. That's like concentrated tomato. Super tart, super sour. There's a little bit of a spice going on in there for sure. But wow, that's not like anything else we've tasted here in India. That caught me off guard. I kind of thought it was gonna taste like dal, like lentils, but it really doesn't. It's got a very strong tomato flavor. Jeez, it's almost like ketchup. Mm. So Gaurav has taken us to this kind of roadside factory where this guy is producing a lot of different milk products. So behind me here, he's just stirring some milk, which he'll turn into rabri, which is sort of like a sweet cream you have with dessert. He's also making fresh cream. Um, anything else? Yes, so he uh, sells hot milk also in okay. winters. And in summer, he sells lassi. He's very famous. You wow. have to try all the three things. The, Malai, the rubbery, and the milk. All right, let's try them. So he just took some of the hot milk and started pulling it or frothing it up using these two big jugs and exchanging it between the two of them and it wasn't a simple process. He was uh, reaching well over his head. I don't know how far that stream of milk was going but I'd say at least four or five feet and now he served it to me in this little clay cup. He put a little bit of the malai on top which is the clotted cream, some of the frothy milk too and then it's just hot milk underneath with a little bit of sugar. Let me try this. Oh man, that is lovely. It's like a cappuccino without the coffee flavor. Super frothy on top, a little bit sweet, and all those chunks of malai or clotted cream in there, really good. piece of meat and then get some curry. Oh man, that Look, looks good. You need to dunk it into it. Like okay, not enough. Like this one. Oh, okay. Like this? Yeah. Let's try that. Mm. Is it nutty? Yeah, it's nutty. Yeah. Uh, it, it has got that smoky flavor as well. Yeah, smoky. Because all the curries that you see here have been cooking, uh, are cooked on coal. Yeah, charcoal. So it is, yeah, it's cooked on charcoal and uh, it's slow cooking. Yeah. That's where the flavor gets into the curry. Smokiness. And it's very smoky. Yeah, and it's got like a nutty yeah. aroma to it. And it's almost a little bit, a little bit spicy, but it's almost a little bit sweet too. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was the top 35 street foods to try in India. Leave a comment down below and let me know if I missed anything. And also let me know what country you'd like to see me do next for this compilation style of video. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye.